All right, the watch list for Tuesday. Had a great, great day in chat today. Um, tripled my daily goal, I think, in the first 30 minutes of the day. Uh, Lorenzo, I think, was done two minutes in. <laughs> Told him, I said, hey, Lorenzo, I'm starting to hate you. Um, all right, R-O-S-G. This one gapped up uh, a couple days ago and sold off all day. Gapped up again, make the shorts maybe a little bit more nervous, but sold off all day. Today, a small gap up and closed pretty close to its high. So this one, you might get to the point here where shorts are starting to give up and you might get an upside rip here. Um, it's a lower float stock. Uh, certainly interesting over um, today's high was 427. So if you want a number to put in your notes, 428 is one potential catalyst. I always like to have some, you know, some numbers written down as potential catalyst based on the daily chart. NYMX. Big pop today and uh, closed near its highs. Actually, the high of the day was 174. You could put 175 um, in your notes. Again, you know, if this if this takes out 175 to the upside, it, it's it's made a huge move already. So you don't want to just join a group of chasers. But you know, we might get uh, we might get a small gap down to a dollar fifty. Maybe trade in a 15, 10 cent range for a while, and then an upside break in the afternoon. That's one possible scenario where you know you get a red to green after the open, something like that. So. Uh, it's certainly worth having on watch. And any time you get a stock like this um, with this kind of move, uh, for me, it stays on at least a chart on one of my monitors, you know, going forward for the next week. We should get two or three nice trades out of that uh, the next week if you're patient and focus on the proper entries. Um, and in that same light, uh, BIOC needs to be on watch. Uh, 15 million shares today and closed very strong. You know, again, I, it, tomorrow do we join a group of chasers? Probably, if we, you know, if we just take it out of the gate, but we might get a red to green or something like that. No matter what happens, I want to have this on watch for the next several days. Should get some nice trades out of it. MNOV gapped up three sessions ago, had a nice long trade in it, but it ended up closing near its lows. Um, then another day, and now today, a third day down in a row. The, the volume's declining. Um, this one's interesting to me uh, for a potential bounce. We didn't get, I had it on bounce watch today, but it didn't give any kind of trigger. So it, it's very simple. It just goes back on bounce for tomorrow. VGGL, um, if I'll take today's candle out of it, we had it on bounce watch for today. And then you can see we had a bounce today real quick. Here's how I called it um, in the chat room. You had this just, there's the early high, $1.90. Okay, and then the middle of the day when I'm not gonna try to trade anyway, it bounces up to $1.86. And, uh, and just chop sideways. So I called this long at $1.87 um, with a stop, I think, at $1.80. Uh, the thinking is, if this gets to $1.87, which is right here, probably going to push through the high of the day. Then you've got a stock, I'll pan out a little bit here, then you've got a stock that ripped three sessions ago that's kind of been flagging, right? Now you've got a stock lighting up the new highs ticker. Okay, so the 187 entry totally made sense. 180 stop, and then you can see what happened. It went all the way up to a uh, whatever it was, 214. Very nice percentage gain in about 20 minutes. Um, okay, so having said all that, it goes back on watch, um, you know, because you could argue, let me get some of these lines off here, you could argue that it found support today. Didn't close near its highs, but it's still now, you know, a little bit of an increase in volume today. It's still now a candidate for maybe um, a red to green or something like that. Maybe we come up and retest uh, this recent high of 240. So I want to have VGGL on watch. PEIX. Um, had this line drawn, it had kind of resistance around 12. It kind of did a little cup and handle here. Tried to break out. Look at the volume the last uh, four days has been pretty strong. Um, this would have been what, last Thursday, popped to 12.64, then a quiet day, then today, popped to 12.62. So we get back over today's high, 12.62. So we get to 12.63, um, you would think we're going to uh, push higher, maybe even challenge the 200 day there around 13.40. So this one, is a, I love the volume, the 10 million shares back here. You know, then you get into the seller buyer battle. Uh, you get the cup and handle, and buyers are really starting to win here. Um, so I really like it. It's it's staying over the high of this uh, the day that it popped a really big. Um, well, the high that day was 12.16. So it's nicely over the high of that pop, and it took like you know I don't know a good month to start kind of taking out those highs. So this one is somewhat coiled and may let me get that line off the chart. Um, May pop nicely over uh, over 12.62. All right, um, CRMD, super strong stock, and then you know then a, a pullback, then another strong move, and it's really been flagging ever since. Um, and now today, a nice volume pop, kind of up out of this little flag here. So looking for this one to possibly continue and challenge these recent highs. 
Um, today's high was 946, so I just put 947 in my notes. Remember, 947 doesn't mean that much, but it is a, an area that's interesting, all right? Um, it's not like if it automat I automatically go long at 947, all right? But anyway, let's, let's, I like to do this too. I like to put a horizontal line on my chart. So then tomorrow when I'm trading, um, you know, it's, it's, it's an easy visual thing to see, right? If you have this on a chart, and you see it getting up to that line, you know, it, instead of having to worry about pricing, you it just simplifies it for you. Um, we are visual creatures after all. So um, I-C-O-N, actually, I think this one uh, could be, you had like four or five red days in a row, and then this monster red day, monster volume. Um, sometimes when you get a big sell-off like this, you know, it, it gets ahead of itself, and then the next day you get a nice bounce. Here it is on the weekly. There's nothing that compelling here that I say, well, it's got great support in this area. I mean, you could argue... 25 was resistance back here in early 2013 then it broke through then it retested and then it took off um, but that's not and even back here the 25 area was resistance so i mean it's kind of an interesting area but that was so long ago that it's kind of not that interesting right but i will throw a line around there at 25 um anyway uh, i do think if this one can trade in a narrow range for a while, break to the upside, we might get a decent little bounce, but it's certainly uh, maybe overdone to the downside. Sometimes when I'm scanning for stocks at night, I'll just, you know, one of my scans is I'll just look and see if anything got really beaten up today. And, and you know, just put it on a chart the next day. Sometimes you get a nice setup for a long. Um, okay, that's I-C-O-N-G-E-N-E. -E. Um, you know, this one's probably going to come in another day, uh, but, you know, I like the gap up. I had two really nice trades in this this morning, actually, as longs, um, but it, it couldn't get through six and ended up closing near its lows. Um, again, maybe a red to green tomorrow. I, I'd actually like to see this come in for another day, but 14 million, almost 15 million shares today, and it is still above, you know, last couple weeks worth of trading. So maybe we hold above five tomorrow, trade in a narrow range, and then you know maybe by Wednesday uh, we get a nice long in it again. I do want to have GENE on watch for the next several days going forward. FTNT closed at 34.63. Looks like they had earnings in after hours, and it's trading. Um, it looks like it closed after hours, close to 38 bucks. I'm, I'm seeing 37.89. Um, so it's. I'm just going to watch this one as a possible gap play tomorrow. Um, and then just a couple others in my notes. These are lower volume stocks, but VJET um, is is kind of interesting here, and I'll, I'll expand on that in just a second. I'll put a line right right here. Um, so up above this resistance, uh, you had the gap up here on earnings. Um, 9.35 was the high of that day. Then this high here was 9.26. Um, you know, so it's certainly interesting if it gets up over the day that it gapped on earnings um, over 9.35. And for about a week now, it's had trouble. Couldn't get through 926. So um, I'm going to put 927, 936 as a couple catalysts on my notes here. All right. And a, another reason to watch this is, yes, it's thin and there's not a, there's not a lot of volume. Um, but DDD has been so strong. And, you know, in, in DDD just a couple sessions ago, looked like, okay, um, you know, it's topped out. It's back down. It's, this thing always sells off. Well, this time it's starting to hold up. Um, so if DDD breaks above these recent highs here, the first thing you want to do is look to some of the lower priced, um, you know, or, or the, the lower float 3D printing stock. So if DDD takes off, and really if you think about it, these sellers that came in here and it closed at the lows of the day probably were pretty confident. Right now we're back up near the highs of that day. So this one could get a nice upside move. And if it does, VJET should follow suit, and it's you got a couple prices there that it could break out over. And then also in that same vein, uh, XONE looks really good if it can break through 16. And from my memory, and I haven't checked it recently, there's um, this is a low float and a lot of shorts in XONE. Uh, I just looked on Finviz, and it was like 40% short, um, and like I don't know, 8 million shares or some really small float. So this is a great if DDD breaks out. Um, I really like XONE as a long or VJET. And that is more stocks than I really want to have on a watch list uh, going into a Tuesday, but that's what I have. And uh, we'll also focus on gappers in the morning. Um, but a lot of the stocks on this list today should, in my opinion, occupy uh, some charts on your monitors um, really for the next several days because you know you may get nothing from them tomorrow, but you know uh, Wednesday or Thursday, might get a couple great setups in some of these names. And uh, 
you really want to focus on the stuff that's had recent volume and passion and uh, you know and then you can get some really nice percentage moves but you can't if you don't have them on a chart ready to go so that's kind of been my mantra lately all right I will quit babbling and we will talk to you guys tomorrow night